In this video, I'm going to be answering these questions using the standard normal distribution. Here, we have given a left tail area here. We have this corresponding z-score here. You will find the Excel file in description. This is the formula for finding the z-score for left tail area. And if the area is on the right, this is the formula for finding the z-score for it in Excel. And if we have the z-score, we have the formula for finding the less than area here. And we have the formula for finding the greater than area, which is just one minus the left tilt area. So for the first question, we have between zero and a particular z value, let's call it z1. So this is z1 here. We have an area of 0.3869. And we're trying to find what the value of this z1 will be. Now we know that the area below a z-score of 0 is 0 0.5. And that tells us that the total area below z1 is going to be 0 0.5 plus 0.3869. So we do equals 0 0.5 plus 0.3869. That will give us 0.8869 in total here. And that will correspond to a z-score of 1.21. For the second question, we're looking at the area between negative 1.03 and a particular z-score. Now, this z-score is going to be on the right here because this area here is greater than 0.5. So, the z-score cannot be on the negative side here. We know this area is 0.7777. We want to find the value of this z-score. So we, if we can find the area below that z-score, then we can find the z-score using the inverse lookup here. So what we can do is find the area below negative 1.03, this area here, and then add it to 0.777, and that will give us the area below that z-score. So we can use find area here to find the area below negative 1.03. So we can see that the area below negative 1.03 is 0.1515. And that gives us the total area below that particular z-score we're looking for. So if we go here and put the area 0.7777 plus 0.1515, we will get the total area there. And the corresponding z-score we see here is 1.47. For part C here, we have a particular z-score here. Let's call it again z1. And we have 1.89 here. So we have the area between them to be 0.7995. We're looking for the value of z1. So one thing we can do is find the total area below 1.89, then subtract 0.7995 from it. And that will give us the remainder of the area here for z1. So let's find the area below 1.89. So I'm going to go to under find area here. I'm going to type 1.89 there. And that gives me the less than area of 0 0.9706. So that is the total area here. So we can subtract 0 0.7995 to find the remainder area there. So if I go here and type equals 0 0.9706 minus 0 0.7995. So that gives me 0 0.1171. So this area here is 0 0.1171. And the corresponding Z value is seen over here to be negative 0.95. For part D, we have negative 5.49 here. And then we have a particular Z value. Now I can see that this area is less than 0.5. So the Z value is going to be somewhere here. Let's call it Z1 over there. So we're told this area between these two is 0.1711. One thing we know is that within three standard deviations of the mean, we have about 99.7% of all the scores. So by the time a z-score is getting up to like negative 5.4, we know that there is really nothing much below that. We can actually check here. If we put in negative 5.49, we see that we get about zero here. So pretty much this area here below 5.49 is essentially just zero. So what we're really looking for is the probability that Z is less than Z1. That is, if this is zero, it means the area below Z1 is essentially just 0.1711. 
So if we plug in 0 0.1711 here, we see that we get negative 0.95. For part E here, we have negative 6.59, and then we have Z less than a particular value there, the Z1. So Z is less than negative 6.59, or Z is less than a particular value here. So we're essentially just talking about Z less than this number because we have the word or here. So whatever is covered at all is what is covered. And besides, the probability that Z will be less than negative 6.59 is going to be about zero. So what we have here is just pretty much the probability that Z less than this particular Z1 is 0.5653. So if we plug in 0.5653 there, we will get a Z value of 0 0.16. For part F, we're looking at Z less than a particular value here. Let's call that Z1 and then Z greater than three here. R means the combination of those two areas is gonna total 0 0.1935. We can find the area above three here and then subtract that from this total in order to get the remaining area here. So if we find the area above three, so if we go to find area here and we put in three there, we find the area above three, which is a greater than area. So this area here is 0 0.0013. And then we can subtract that from the total of the two areas to find the area on the left here. So if we go here and do equals 0.1935 minus the 0.0013 we just obtained here, we get about 0.1922. So the area on the left here is 0.1922. And the corresponding z-score is what we have here as negative 0.87. In part g, we want the probability that z is less than zero and z is greater than a particular value. Now, because we have and, it means that value, that other Z1 has to be on the left because we want Z less than zero, which is all of this, 0 0.5, and Z is greater than this particular Z1. So we're looking for that Z1 that will give us that intersection. So notice that Z1 cannot be on the right here because there is no intersection between Z less than zero and this area here. There is no intersection. The intersection of these two will have been zero. So Z1 has to definitely be on the left. So this area here is 0 0.4904. We know that area less than zero is 0 0.5. So we're going to subtract this 0 0.4904 from 0.5 to get this area here. And if we do that, we get 0 0.0096. So if we plug in 0 0.0096, we obtain negative 2.34. So finally, in part H, we have given here. So if we call this Z1, for example, then this here is going to be the probability that Z is greater than Z1 and Z is greater than zero divided by probability that Z is greater than zero. And that gives us the 0.9616 here. Now we know that probably that Z is greater than zero is always going to be 0.5. So this is 0.5 here. And if we cross multiply, what we have here is that this numerator is going to be equal to 0.9616 times 0 0.5. So this numerator is equal to 0 0.4808. We have Z greater than a Z1. Oh, sorry, Z less than Z1. and z greater than zero, there is an intersection here. So if z is going to be greater than zero, which is to the right here, for us to have an intersection, z1 has to be on the right here. So this would be the intersection, this would be the area that is 0 0.4808. So again, we know that this area to the right here is 0 0.5. We simply need to subtract 0 0.4808 from 0.5 and that will give us the area here. So if we plug that in here, so that's the greater than area. So if we do 
minus 0 0.4808 that will give us 0 0.0192 and the corresponding z score will be 2.07 positive so we have 2.07 here and that's it